Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sons of the Forest, the latest early access survival game to hit Steam. It's fantastic, it's brilliant, but I have noticed one issue. Everyone seems to suck at the game. I'm not naming anyone in particular, but I'm noticing that most of you streamers haven't finished the game yet, which is a surprise considering that you can beat the game using a stick, which is exactly what we're going to be doing today, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, as you've probably noticed from the title of the video, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can complete this entire game by ignoring all of the intended gameplay paths and just wielding the easiest to find item. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive into a brand new game. Ah, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, washed up on the beaches of this wonderful nightmarish island, rammed full of cannibals, beasties, and um, also just sticks, which is good. I mean, heck, we've got this bag here, and the bag has a hatchet, which is, you know, a weapon we could use, although it's actually not a useful weapon. You see the bag hatchet here? Yes, you know, it's kind of a okay, it's it's something, but it's completely and utterly useless, and we're not even going to bother equipping any of this. Now, my goal, ladies and gentlemen, is very simple. I'm going to beat this game as fast as possible, and the best way to beat this game as fast as possible is to get the other side of that mountain, which you can see off in the distance, which I'm sure won't be too difficult at all. Now, there are a few intended ways to play the game. You could build yourself a nice large settlement, help this NPC on the floor in front of you, or alternatively, you could live a true goblin mode existence, whereby you feast yourself entirely off of what exists inside of these crates, which might not seem like much. However, you can actually cheese the game almost entirely because by continuously exiting the game and reloading the game, all of these chests for some reason just respawn, which as you can imagine, is pretty useful. Nonetheless, we don't really actually need any of the items in any of these chests because they're all pretty much meaningless. Anyway, we've got a game to go and finish because uh, most of you guys seem to spend hours on it, so I want to speed up a bit. Now, the game wants you to um, heal this poor guy here, Kelvin. Um, evidently his ears are bleeding because he's just listened to the most fire mixtape in the entire known universe. So, um, honestly, we're just gonna leave him in recovery mode there. I'm sure everything will be fine. And I just need to find myself the, uh, game-breaking item, which is right here, ladies and gentlemen. A stick! It's so good I'm going to be collecting multiple of them because they are by far the greatest item this entire universe has to offer. So, first things first, I could go into the weird, nightmare creepy cave over there. However, I'm not going to. Well, I'm going to go past this weird, creepy cave with the dead fish and instead try and make my way around this giant giga mountain. This entire process could take quite a while, but don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, this game is kind of a walk in the park. And if I die, I can simply respawn. Yes, that's a completely viable thing indeed. Now, the humble stick might not seem like the greatest item this entire game has to offer, but it actually is. Not only is it long and malleable and fantastic and fierce and devastating, it's in an ample supply. And by that, I mean we're literally in a bloody forest. It's called Sons of the Forest. Trees are literally everywhere. It's a vegan wonderland, so to speak. Now, one of the limitations we will run into is that my character is a slow as heck uh, little noodle boy, but luckily I'm able to satiate him with some fresh water and the like to keep him going, as we've got a long trek ahead of us. We're going on a journey, my friends. A fellowship to save the world, or at least finish the game, which is probably the same thing. Oh, look, a moose. Oh, our first friend in the world. Oh, is it a lovely little fellow? Hello there, moosey friend. Ah, oh, yes. Wonderful. He's a splendid, majestic beast, hollow on the inside, just like my heart. Now, there is an intended gameplay strategy for this game, and that is, of course, to run around the map and collect various items, explore caverns and caves, and slowly discover the mysteries of the world we live in. Like, why are there all these graves everywhere, and who left this stick behind? Don't they know how valuable they are? Now, the island is populated with uh, various many threats. You've got mutants, you've got cannibals, you've got cannibal mutants, and all of those nasty beasties exist to slow you down in the world and make you distracted and not truly appreciate the wonderful nature and landscape. The game intends to slow you down and have you collect weaponry, build up a tree house, maybe a giant wooden fort. <laughs> yes, you can do all of those things if you wish, but then you're missing out on the true stick-based adventure game. Interestingly, the developers have created the first stick-type game after Henry Stickman. Ah, I truly love exploring the wilderness. It is, uh, it is wonderful. I mean, it does help that this game is actually breathtakingly beautiful and truly a sight to behold. Oh, just look at this. A beautiful vista. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Look at this. What a grand old view. Ah, oh, glorious and wonderful. And how the heck do I get down from here? Well, I suppose this is where one of those handy dandy rope items would come into the picture. However, I don't have a rope. So I guess I just have to go back and around. Unless, can I slide? 
slide my way down there? Uh, I feel like that's going to kill me. But then again, ladies and gentlemen, there's only one way to find out. In order to make sure that it works out safely, I'm actually going to have to build myself a quick little camp, which is done by placing down a tarpauling, equipping our good old friend the stick, and would you look at that, ladies and gentlemen, we've just created a luxury studio apartment, which could be yours for only £1,500 a month in London. Anyway, now that I'm able to drop down a safe, it's time for me to attempt a little bit of stick-based shenanigans. So, first you're going to need to place a stick like so, then go behind the stick and place it like so again. There we go, with bam, wonderful. No, sticky, come back. Then once you have that, I'm going to need a circle stick right about here, lovely. All right, and now what I'm about to do can only be described as a feat of scientific mastery. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the start of the British space program. We might not have been able to get anything else into space so far, but this time it's going to be different. So I'm going to walk backwards and hopefully this is going to propel me into the stratosphere. So ladies and gentlemen, three, two, one. <laughs> okay, that kind of worked. Uh, there's the ground. I'm sensing a minor issue with the British based space program, largely involving a minor issue whereby I uh, die, which is not good at all. Interestingly, dying actually works rather well because it can sometimes move you closer to your objective. Because for example, now I have actually descended off of that hill. Yes, I died and came to this place, but that's pretty much the same as progress. Nonetheless, I think I can do something a little bit better. Right, okay, time for attempt two, because evidently that one didn't work out so well. So in order to do this attempt, we're going to be using the Improvised Survival Guide. This is quite a fun little book, and it allows you to build wonderful things. Uh, there's just one minor interesting issue with this book, which is that when you have it equipped, you develop the same physics as the sledging physics. And the issue with this game at the moment is that sledging physics, ladies and gentlemen, means you can uh, effectively defy the laws of reality. So I'm just going to walk close to this edge so that I begin to fall, and then equip this lovely book, and then just sledge my way off down to safety. Ah, yes. Smooth as butter, ladies and gentlemen. Perfectly balanced indeed. Anyway, onwards with my lovely adventure with my stick. Just a gentlemanly stroll through the forest of fun gameplay balance. Just exactly as the developer intended. Anyway, we're actually pretty close to our destination now. It is just straight up ahead. And considering that we've only been in this world for one day, I'd say we've done quite good for crossing the entirety of the island. Now you might be thinking, look, you've uh, you've gone a little bit excessive with these sticks and I can kind of understand why. I mean, my inventory is comprised of pretty much just sticks, but uh, that's actually all you need, ladies and gentlemen. You see, the US military industrial complex has lied to us for far too long, telling us that we need things like guns and nuclear bombs. No, 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 no. Good old fashioned stick will get you in and out of pretty much every situation you could possibly need. And bring out the book again, a little bit of sliding, lovely, there we go, good slide, and just like that we are pretty much at our destination. Now if you've played the first game you can probably guess where the story of the second game goes, but guess what ladies and gents, there's a big underground evil facility, that's right, it's full of nasty gubbins and goblins, but we don't have to worry about any of that malarkey, for we are a glorious explorer, and that means we can just simply enter this facility. Yes. Now, once you arrive at the location of, you know, the complete and utter end game of the game, uh, it's important to set yourself up for success. And in order to do that, that means you must set up a lovely save point. That's right. Just in case something goes wrong and the game bugs out a bit, which, uh, let's be honest, is relatively possible. So now that we have uh, all of that secured and our save station planted, it's time for us to get through this door, which, as you can see, the developers have very fantastically gated behind a completely wonderful item, a blue key card reader. Now, if we had a key card, we could scan it, but I have not played the game. I've not dived into a bajillion dungeons to find where the key card is located. Instead, what I have done is I have looked around the forest floor and found myself a very nice stick. Now, with said stick, I'm going to simply waltz up to this door and uh, just place the stick down on the other side of the door. Now, interestingly, this creates a physics conundrum whereby I am now on uh, the other side of the door. Oh dear, I can't get back outside, but equally, I think I'm in the place where I want to be, seeing as this is the end game location of the game. I'm actually going to go outside and uh, just do it again, because why not? I mean, it's a physical door, and it is apparently slowing my access to reality. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, it matters not. I can simply escape reality and go to the other side. So before you go adventuring, what you're going to want is this lovely handy dandy torchy majig. Uh, the handy dandy torchy majig is going to help you when it comes to navigating your way through this nightmare. So there we go, we navigate our way through this nightmare. We don't need all of these sticks, we can leave those sticks behind, they're our good stick friends, but if you 
you want the, uh, you know, one stick run, which is very privileged, then uh, just run into your sticks and they'll fall over and you can take them with you. Now, next up, we want to continue on this adventure and the game wants us to go down here into some weird, dark, dingy facility. Ugh, oh, there's probably monsters down there and you would have to fight them. So instead, we're going to, once again, ignore that entirely and just uh, go above the map because, honestly, this is a much nicer location. You're above any nasty beasties that could get in your way and you can simply just have a wander around. There we go. What a lovely sight to behold. Don't mind the terrain clipping occasionally. It's all fine. This is relatively standard affair. And oh dear, look at all of that nasty blood. We wouldn't want to get our shoes on that, so that's why we're elevated above the situation. Through this dark evil research facility we go, just wiggling around once again. Oh, more horrible combat encounters probably. Don't worry, we're just going to uh, jump over here and sidestep all of that and make our way into this lovely location. Ah oh, yes, this seems much nicer. Now, once again, we just want to find the location where we can place a stick and uh, warp halfway across a room because why not? Now, if like me, you're playing on peaceful mode, this next section does not matter. But if there are horrible beasties like cannibals and mutants in your game, it's entirely possible that you've made your way up to here without fighting any of them because, well, you can just warp through the walls and that kind of makes it a little bit of a doddle. So what happens next? Because you're going deep into the center of the world and so you're going to be needing to fight. Luckily, the uh, developers have given you a pick-me-up. You've got some meds, you've got some food, and you've got yourself a shotgun with a whole bunch of ammunition. So that's pretty much the end game sorted. We can now just ignore all of that. But what we're now going to do is uh, finish the game. This can be done by wandering into here and, oh, would you look at that? We're in some weird section which requires a severed hand as a key card. Now, um, I don't happen to have a severed hand as a key card. Luckily, I do have a stick and uh, that is going to work nicely in order to allow me to access this dark location through here. So we're just going to go and wander through some dark evil caves. Oh, look, some lava. Wow, this is spooky. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Imagine if I'd spent hours of gameplay reaching this point. It would probably have an impact on me. But then again, I'm British and I can't feel emotions. So yes, you just want to wiggle your way up through all of this nasty little lava section and oh look at this what a brilliant view oh yes anyway running jump section here don't mind the skeletons they're all having a grand old time just hanging around oh now look at this next section oh exciting spooky lava lake you like to see that that's impactful nice visual design once again uh don't worry about any of it these people died for whatever reason we don't need to worry about that i like to imagine that all of this game actually takes place slightly off of the coast of the Isle of Wight, as such a thing is canonical with all of the mutations that the population of that location do have. Once again, just make your wiggly way around the lava section. Very fun indeed. You can do some surfing if you like, or just, you know, make your way to the end of the level like a normal person. Oh, this person's looking pretty dead to me. That's a shame. And my character is starting to get a bit peckish. I mean, after all, we did just crash on this island about 20 minutes ago, so he is probably wanting a snack. But don't worry, friend. Uh, we've got a game to finish. Look, this is a spooky island and I know you want to get off it. Some people want to stay, that's fine, but my goal is to uh, leave an island. I want to go home, I want to see my corgi, and most importantly, I'd rather like a cup of tea. We've got some lovely warning notes here, like, hey, uh, make sure you stay in the cube. That's very important. We love the cube. Cube keeps everyone safe and happy. Ah, oh, what a lovely, dastardly, spooky environment. Truly drawing you into the scares. Wonderful stuff indeed. Right, here we go. I think final leg now. We've got some lovely stalactites and larvery doodars. And oh, you know what? I reckon we can, we can get a bit of surfing done. There we go. Look at this. Bit of speed building up. Oh yeah, look at me go. Oh yes, now that's a little bit of speed boost. Wow, when we put this on the world record speed running websites, that'll have definitely made the difference. <laughs> I mean, knowing the fact that this game is early access, someone's probably beaten it in about four minutes. Ah, oh, now this is looking good. Little hop over the lava, but we've got some looty chests with, oh, lovely golden stuff. Now, of course, we haven't really got any of the end game items uh, actually equipped. The thing is, in order to get to this point, uh, you do need endgame items equipped, you do need endgame loot. However, uh, there's the cube up ahead, ladies and gentlemen, and this is going to end the game. Now, don't worry, we won't spoil it, because in post we're going to replace the grand reveal with something completely different. But here we go, just to prove that you can beat Sons of the Forest with just a stick, here I am. I've made it through, and would you look at that, I've even changed my clothing. I've got some nice weird golden tech armor on, which is lovely, but I don't remember remember crafting that or putting it on, but that's fine. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's our deaf friend has arrived. Yep, he made it here as well. Wonderful. We're all in the cube. One big happy family. Don't know who this 
guy in front of me is, does it matter? Probably not. He seems a bit upset and distraught, but that's okay because I've got some new shiny golden threads to show him. Look at that, that calms him right down. Look at those screams of happiness. Anyway, uh, the fun stuff is happening and oh my, what a, what a reveal. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's majestic. Oh, it's truly wonderful. Have you seen anything quite like it? So shocking. So shocking indeed. My god, I can't believe you. That's that's the case. Wow. What a reveal. What a what a surprise. Oh my goodness, I'm shaking in my fancy gold clothing. Oh, how wonderful. How wonderful indeed. Anyway, that section's all over now. Um the cube's complete. Uh wonderful stuff. I guess all that matters now is that it's time for us to leave the island. Oh, hello. I forgot about you, blob lady. Hello, blob lady. Sorry, blob lady. Uh we didn't save you. Goodbye. And here we go. Here's the exit, ladies and gentlemen. It really is as easy as that. Just simply equip oneself with a stick and go on a glorious adventure. Oh, look, we've reunited father and son. Uh, they're probably the, uh, you know, father and son from the first game. But hey, it all worked out in the end. I hope you're all happy and that, um, you know, we made your lives good. And you know what? I'm going to join you on your exit because as fun as this island is, uh, there's no tea. So um, take me with you, please. Please, for goodness sake, have you got a box of Yorkshire tea on you? Yorkshire tea gold, please. Just a morsel. A crumb. A crumb, please. Please tell me you have a working kettle and you don't microwave it like American barbarians please. Anyway, that's the game complete. We're all wonderfully leaving. What a fun experience. Uh, this guy who we didn't rescue or save on a beach is joining us. Don't know why he thinks that's the case. Don't even know how he made it to the bottom. Maybe he found the key cards when I didn't. Or maybe he just saw me use a stick and got inspired. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, that's the end of the game. It really is as easy as that. Uh, there you go. A game via end night. Uh, that's wonderful. And I think as we can all agree, uh, this game is perfectly balanced, has no exploits whatsoever, and is working exactly as the developers intended. Big shout out to all of these names on screen for programming the stick to be rightfully the most overpowered item in the game. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to give it a like and go down into the comment section and tell me how much you love sticks, because God, I love them. They're wonderful. Those beautiful twiggy bastards. And hey, if you want to see a very smug British bastard break more wonderful games, then why not consider subscribing? Because oh my goodness, this is my job and please, I love my job. And of course, a fantastic thank you to each and every one of the lovely channel members and patrons. Look at all of these wonderful buggers who made this all possible. And hey, if you sat there wondering what video to watch next, well, look no further than this one on screen now, hand chosen by me to be perfect for you. Anyway, see you in the next one. Goodbye.